A mother's main role is to traumatize the child, to frustrate the child, to push the child away, to encourage the child to become separate from her, to, be, to, to render the child an individual, to foster in the child a proper reality testing and to get rid of the child's magical thinking. And at the same time, there's a fine balancing act because the mother needs to continue to be throughout this process a safe, a secure base. She needs to be present. She needs to be empathic, attuned to the child, child needs and child's fears and anxieties, caring enough to do something about these things, holding and containing, loving unconditionally, and yet demanding from the child certain accomplishments, milestones in the child's development. And not many, not many mothers know how to do this. Not many mothers know how to balance these utterly conflicting demands. On the one hand, to be a safe base, and on the other hand, to push a child away. On the one hand, to love and care for the child. On the other hand, to frustrate the child. On the one hand, to be empathic and loving. And on the other hand, to traumatize the child. Not many, not many mothers know how to, how to accomplish this um, equilibrium. The child is poised on the cusp of what is called object relations, relations with other people. He needs to say goodbye to mommy. He needs to internalize her, introject her, and carry her with him for the rest of, her, of, his, of his or her life as a mere voice. And the mother needs to let go. She cannot allow herself to be absent or selfish or depressed, to infantilize herself, to parentify the child, to use the child as an instrument to realize her unfulfilled dreams and fantasies and wishes. She can't do any of this if she's a good enough mother. And regrettably, few mothers by these definitions, by these criteria, few mothers are good enough mothers. 